Hey everybody, it's Greg back to here, and I'm joined today with Josh Sino again <laughs> in the same shirt. Well, we're shooting a four part series today, so Josh was concerned about his shirt, but like, <laughs> as if you're even going to watch all four of these. But if you decide you want to watch all four videos, just click on my channel name and you'll see these videos part one, two, three, and four. But uh, so anyway, that's why Josh is dressed the same, like it matters. But anyway, today, this is part two, we were talking about five portrait tips in part one. Now we're going to dive a little deeper into each section of that. So we're going to go into lens choice a little bit more. And I'll let you take it from there as far as your favorite. Sure. <laughs> favorite. We're just kind of rolling with this, but we've been doing this for what? This is almost four years this summer, this channel. Oh God, have so, we been doing it that long? Uh, anyway, so we're going to talk about um, prime lenses versus zoom lenses. I'll let you get started on that one. Sure, yeah. Um, my main lens that I use nowadays is a zoom. Uh, I have, you only have one or two zooms, don't you? Well, you already yeah. sold off your 16 to 35, didn't you? Yeah, I only have one zoom. So you now. only have the 24 to 70. Yeah. I have a 24 to 70, 24 to 105, and 70 to 200. I think that's that's all I have if, as far as zooms go, excluding all my film lenses. But um, I just find them more flexible. It's not to say I don't own any prime lenses. I do own three or four. So, But just sheer flexibility of what I do for a living. Uh, well, part of my living uh, is mostly event photography, and I don't always have the luxury of backing up or directing people. Because, you know, when you're at a wedding, it's not like I'm going to stop the wedding and tell them to, hey, hold on, let me back up. Yeah. So I have to adjust on the fly. So Yeah, that that's a good point, because lens choice really depends on what you're using your lens for. For me, I like to use prime lenses, and my problem was... I was so focused on getting the shot that I'd maybe be shooting at a focal length I didn't like. So for example, if I was using a 70 to 200, I might be shooting all my shots at 70 and I just forgot to adjust my zoom lens. So I just thought, why don't I just use a 135 lens? I don't have to think about that and I'll just walk back and forth. But in your case, he doesn't have the room. So for me, I'm kind of outside a lot when I'm shooting my portraits and I have lots of room to move and it's not so crucial, but I can see your point about having a zoom lens for event mm. photography for sure. Well, I mean, like, especially when I'm in a nightclub and it's crowded, because the two nightclubs I work at, uh, one of them has, I don't know how on earth they have this type of capacity. I don't know why the fire code allows them to have this many people, but I'm literally jammed up with people this far away from me, and I have to fit three people in that photo, so I have to have a zoom. So 24 mil on a full frame is my... That's my baby. That's my go-to. <laughs> so Josh, yeah, Josh does nightclub photography, if you didn't know. So he goes to some nightclubs in the evening and shoots the events there. And so that's kind of what you're talking about. Yeah, right? yeah. That's And then every so often I'll have the option of doing my own shoots without being in a sweaty nightclub. You kind of fit in in that environment. That's what right? <laughs> <But anyway, laughs> so, just for it. <laughs> so let's talk about, like, if you were to use, say, a prime lens, which mm -hmm. one would it be? What would be your prime the one that I've always gone to reach for is the 85. Uh, it's not the fastest lens in the world. It's only 1.8. It's not the sharpest lens in the world. But what I love about it is that it's very small. It's very light. So I don't have to worry too much about the weight of it. I don't. I can take really nice portrait type shots without drawing attention to myself, without having this humongous lens in front of me. So it puts people at ease. I, uh, that's yeah. why I tend to use that one. Yeah, that's what I found to be a problem with the Canon. It's white, the 7200. It's huge. People see it and they think, oh, and they start staring at you, I found. Like if I was in a park or something, people would stop and watch. Yeah, it sort of attracts a lot of it's attention. It's not a bad thing, though. I've, I've gotten press access just because I had a white lens, well, well, even though I didn't have a press pass. It could be pluses, I guess. But yeah, I prefer the primes. A couple of reasons. One is the lower aperture, so I could have a blurrier background. And just it's less to think about for me, whereas... Uh, Josh likes, I think you prefer Zoom if you had the choice, really. But uh, mm -hmm. I think the 24 to 70 is great if you're into travel photography. You really can't beat that. So that's my favorite Zoom lens. Um, if I had one choice, though, and I maybe would go with the Zoom, too. I think you have a good point about flexibility. And the 70 to 200 would be a great choice as well. So a lot to think about as far as do I go with prime lenses? Do I go with Zoom? Depends but, on your budget, I but guess. But even beyond that, there's different focal lengths too. So, I mean, if you worry about wide-angle lenses, nice thing about that, you can fit a lot of stuff in it. Bad thing about it is your depth of field is quite deep. So you it, the chance of you separating your subject from the background is more difficult. Well, yeah, I have a 35 prime that I never use. 
I don't, I don't Do use it. I bought it. I, it? <laughs> I, I never use it. I should sell it actually, because it's just, I, I think, what am I going to do with this 35? It's a little limiting, but 24 to 70, that's a little bit better of a range for me. But as far as, yeah, if it was one prime, if you could only have one prime, you think the 85, that's what you think? Ooh, oh God, one prime probably would be a 35, Whoa, believe it or but not. But I don't even use the 35. Why would you want well, a 35? It's just because it's just more flexible. Mm, you know, it, it's, it's halfway between... 24 mm. and 50 so it's like yeah well mm. you know i like 50 because it's just it's just very flexible but it's sometimes a little too tight i have to disagree man i don't i don't ever use the 35 <laughs> and i don't like 50 so for me if it was one prime it'd be close between 85 and 135 because the 135 challenge we should a, do this as a challenge in the future we probably should but one one month you you only use a 35 and one month mm. i'll only use something ridiculous like a 90 mil yeah macro or something that's See something happens. i wouldn't let, normally use it could change our perspective actually who knows all right so do you think we should wrap this up what would be your closing thoughts on my choice? closing thoughts um i would probably say if you were just getting into portrait photography Get a zoom because you may not end up liking portrait photography. You might end up loving uh, landscape photography, and that way you didn't commit twenty two hundred dollars towards a eighty five one point four Canadian yeah. price. Yeah. I know you Americans have an awesome dollar right now, so it's it's a bitter point for us right now. Yeah. But at least you know, yeah, the dollar's not good for us right now. <laughs> depending on when you're watching this video, yeah. But um, I think that's a good point, actually. And I never thought about that. If you're just starting you might be able to find that focal range that you really like between the 70 to 200, say. And if you do find you like the 135 and that's where you gravitate towards, then you might think about maybe a 135 prime. Hmm. Same goes for 24 to 70. If you find that you're always shooting at 50 mil, then that might be a good indication that maybe a 50 mil prime might be right for you. So that I is a good point. I would probably say if you were to buy a 50 mil 1.8, it, it's a really cheap lens. They call it the fantastic plastic or the nifty 50 for a reason. It's, it's a really cheap cost of admission to having really decent quality images. So I say go from there. If you still need tighter, then at least you know you can go to 85 or 135. If you say, eh, it's just too tight all the time, go to... 35 maybe even go to a 28 mil you know you never know i mean i've seen a lot of portrait photographers use the wide end of the focal lens like 28s and 35s so tim does yeah there you go and if you don't know tim he's a friend of he's us. in a previous video <laughs> link somewhere here to yeah. that video actually yeah what you can do is if you click on my name there that'll take you to my channel and if you click on videos you'll see all of my channels so you can watch all of them there's also playlists as well so before you go make sure you subscribe to my channel just click on subscribe also, make sure you visit Shutterslam.com. That's my main site. It's Shutterslam.com. I'll put a link below in the description. And before you go, make sure you like this and give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. What, what kind of comments? Uh, you know what? If you if there was a topic you guys wanted to know about, just ask us. You know, or if you just want to ask our opinions on something, maybe we might have differing opinions. That I would love to hear what you have to say about this, and we could be full of crap, and you might be. <laughs> Making half a million dollars a year doing photography. You might know what the real deal is. So yeah, love to a, hear from you. Yeah, leave a comment below and uh, let, let Josh know he's full of crap. And uh, make sure you look out for the rest of the videos in this series. All right, I'll see you in the next video.